Hey everybody, I'm JJ, you're watching Reality Survival, and today I'm just going to talk a little bit about how to protect the most important vehicle that you could have in like an EMP or a grid down situation. Now, most people might look at that and be like, what are you talking about? <laughs> that ain't going very far very fast, and that's true, but they're really, really good. Tractors are really, really good at doing work. And if you're in a grid down situation, you're going to have a lot of work to do. You're probably going to have to try to change access to your street and your property to keep unwanted people out. That might entail moving big rocks or setting up uh, roadblocks or whatever the case may be. And having a tractor to be able to help you with some of that heavy lifting is a huge, huge advantage. So a tractor is a 12 volt system. Most, most of the tractors run on 12 volt systems. Some of the bigger ones run off 24 volt, 48 volt, but most of your, you know, mid-sized consumer level tractors like this one are going to run off of, um, 12 volts. And so if you want to protect your tractor from an EMP so that it will run no problems afterwards because these new tractors got a lot of chips in them and all that kind of stuff. All you got to do is get an EMP shield and mount it up. I'm going to show you how it mounts up real quick. And uh, if you want to protect your tractor or your Bobcat or, you know, any other kind of implement like an ATV or anything that has a 12 volt system, all you got to do is go to EMPshield.com. Use the discount code Reality Survival when you check out. That'll save you 50 bucks per unit. So if you get three or four units, you can save a couple hundred bucks. So it's a pretty good discount. So anyway, the, the, the first thing that you got to do is you got to find a place to mount it. Now, I went ahead and mounted mine right here. Um, this is, I think it's going to be a pretty good spot. It doesn't, it doesn't touch the uh, air filter canister. It's secured by three screws plus the Velcro tape that comes with it. And you can use the Velcro tape just fine. It's that industrial 3M stuff, which is, which is nice. Um, and then you just got to hook up three wires. So the first wire um, is actually, this is probably the second. Really, the, the first one that you should hook up is your ground wire. So you find the battery on your tractor or your ATV or whatever the case may be. And you figure out, you know, how you're going to uh, mount the wire to it. You got three wires. You got a black wire, which is right there. You got a red wire and then you got a green wire. So the black wire goes to the negative battery terminal. And then you might need to, depending on what your battery covers are like, you see how I cut that notch out right there? You might need to do that just so that the little cap will close again. And then same thing on the red side, the positive terminal. I just put my wire, hooked it just right to it right there. Just took that little nut off and stuck that underneath it. And then that is good to go, and that still snaps down. And then I found a good spot on the chassis, on the frame, to get a good solid ground. Now this goes right into the metal part of the frame down here, and the, the, this bolt has good threads right down into that metal. And so I got a good solid chassis ground. And then now, as you can see, my light is on, and the tractor is protected. Now, one thing I will say, is that if you don't drive your tractor for months on end, then you're gonna wanna add a power disruption switch. And that's a switch that you could turn, just put it on the red line, and you could turn that switch on and off. And the reason I say that is because if you let it sit for months on end, eventually, just that little, that little LED and the, and the very minor amount of electricity draw that this thing has, it's gonna drain your battery down. So, Think about that. I use my tractor all the time. I'm driving it, you know, usually at least once a weekend um, for something or other around here. And so I'm not too worried about that. But that's it. That's all I got to do. Now my tractor is protected from an EMP. Uh, God forbid that would ever happen. And I don't really have to, to worry about that aspect of it. Now, obviously, there's other aspects that you have to worry about. You have to worry about people wanting to come and take your equipment. You got to have home security locked down. You got to be able to defend yourself, all those kinds of things. But this is a huge force multiplier. Now, I know a lot of you guys uh, from the comments that I've heard and the things that you've said to me in chats and live streams and everything is that you're very concerned about the possibility of a nuclear war or with these balloons coming over an EMP being set off that would, you know, push us back a ways, uh, back to the 1800s kind of thing. Well, if you protect your vehicles 
if you protect your machines like your tractors, if you protect your house, then you're going to be in a lot better situation than everybody else. And, you know, that gives you a step ahead. Now, yes, it might draw some, some additional attention to you. Maybe people would want to come and be like, why do you still have a generator and lights going and all that kind of stuff? But it's better, I think it's better to have the option to use those force multiplying tools and, and to be able to generate your own electricity, be able to use your car if you needed to, not that you would use it much, but if you needed to, uh, I think it's better to have those options personally. And what we did learn from that EPRI report in the video that I did not long ago is that the power grid would only be down for a few months. So you just got to get through for a few months until everything comes back up and then you'll be good to go. And that's why I think it's even more important, you know, more important now than ever to use these products like the EMP Shield because... You don't have to, it's not life ending situation. An EMP is not going to take down the entire grid. Just one of them isn't. Now, if they did five, six, or 10 of them, you know, then yeah, that may be the case. But the electric companies know what parts to replace and how to replace them and how to bring the grid back up. They did a three year study, they know how to deal with this problem now. It's not this unsolvable situation like the initial two congressional reports on EMP said. Um, it's not going to be years long, so you don't got to get through that long until things start to return to normal. Now, is there going to be a lot of chaos? Yes, of course, there would be a lot of chaos if that happened. You still got to get through that rough time, but we're Americans. We can do this, right? We got to have a positive can-do attitude. I'm not going to have a defeatist attitude. I'm not going to recommend that anybody have a defeatist attitude about just giving up. That's ridiculous. We're all about the white pill, not the black pill here. So, Anyway, if you want to give yourself an advantage, if you want to give yourself a little hope, you want to give yourself a feeling like, hey, I'm doing something to make sure that my chances are better if this very unlikely event to were ever to happen, which is kind of what prepping is all about, then you can go to empshield.com. You can get you, um, you know, however many of these EMP shields you need. Use the discount code Reality Survival. That'll save you $50 per unit. And you'll be doing something. You'll be making progress. You'll be headed down the road to being more prepared. It's a long journey. There's a lot to do. I got more than a thousand videos here on YouTube that you guys can look at to see how to become prepared. Uh, but this is just one aspect of it. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to live the six P's proper prior preparation prevents poor performance. Stay safe, guys.